Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Pictures so perfect we play Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next So the context of my call is that the policy is overheated. To that day, the Minister of Information is accusing Mr. Peter Obi of treason. People want interim government. There are all kinds of things going around. There's a whole shabang of things that seems to want to destabilize Nigeria. The DSS is shouting that there are people who are all over the place doing things. And the simple problem is just to resolve the election petitions. So the question is not whether it is doable. It is whether it can be done. So I start by saying that the judicial philosophy of Nigeria is about 100 years old. Nigeria is no, not known for speed. Why is it possible that Ghana finishes its own election petition in 30 days? So why can't we also do it here? Why should we have 360 days to do something that is very simple? So the new international gold standard, and I sit as a senior arbitrator in, in, in the city of London, and what we do is we apply case management. So my first recommendation is to say, the issues presented to the tribunals, are they amenable to quick resolution? And I think there are three issues which you've outlined that are amenable to quick resolution, one way or the other. Now, under the Kenyan procedure, those procedure, those questions that I've set out are decided in exactly one day. So if I was the presiding judge of the tribunal, I would give two hours to the petitioner to establish the case whether 25% of uh, FCT is relevant in the consideration of who is the president or not. I would give time to Mr. Tinubu's people to reply and I'll deliver a ruling at 6 p.m. What, what's the difficulty? These are purely matters of law. So it is absolutely feasible. If those three questions do not succeed, then the part A of the petition would be now to do what you say, take the issue of electoral malpractice, which I concede will be a lot longer. But I have a strong feeling that those three questions I have set out can resolve the petition one way or the other. And it can be done in seven days. If, if Kenya can do it in 14 days, why do we need 360 days to do our own? Uh, are we not more highly judicially educated than Kenya? So come on, let I, And I also, would, without criticizing the lawyers in the petition, since they filed the petition, I haven't heard anything from them. There's all sorts of procedures by which you can front load a case, push it, set out procedural issues, set out jurisdictional issues, for the tribunal to determine, that's number one. Two, the tribunal itself can offer its own motion, so we to raise questions. So we've read all these petitions, and we think we can dispose of this petition if we set out some questions that, if taken, can resolve the entire thing. I'm concerned that the polity is overheated, and the way to go is to see if we can get the petitions resolved before May 29. The elections were in, in February, that's about four months. What's the difficulty about resolving these cases well before the handover? Kenya has a procedure whereby they lay out a policy, there shall be no inauguration until the petitions are complete. And in the OAS uh, uh, panel, which I was a member, we, we set out that procedure. There's a certain unfairness for a petitioner to challenge the president, a president-elect who goes on to get inaugurated. That's what's causing all the problem. So let's give it a go. Let the judiciary give it a go. Let the lawyers in the, in the tribunal give it a go to see whether we cannot accomplish what I've described in my letter. So that's the base of my letter. All right. Good well, man. thank you very much, Dr. Agbakoba. Good morning and good to see you. One of the things I'd like to ask you, you've yeah, painted you, a very good picture in terms of how things can work if it's settled as you recommended. However, yes. there are still a few mm -hmm. challenges, perhaps. Um, as Dr. Abate cited, 180 days is the time stipulated and then a further 60 days if you were to appeal the decision of the, um, of the, of the no. courts. Now, no, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, oh, so, sorry to cut you. Yes. Sorry to cut you short. Yes, you are wrong. Ahead. 
Okay. Nothing says you must take the one. Nothing says you must take the one eighty days. Nothing says you must yes, take the one eighty days. Yes, I said stipulated. That's the amount that? of time. Because there's a timeline. No, yeah. no, no, not. So I no, can no, no. Given. You can go on the first day. Yes, I agree with you. But I said you can go you, on the first day. But the applicant yeah. has one hundred and eighty days. That's what I mentioned. But you're recommending that. It, that, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It that. It, it, it doesn't. If Peter B is pushing his petition, and he wants the president-elect not to be inaugurated. Why should he wait for 180 days? If he files the petition, he ought to put in applications for a summary judgment. Why must he wait? That's the mistake. Kenya has 30, a 30-day 30 timeline. Nobody waits for the end of the timeline. Once you file your petition, you should be ready to make pre-entry strikes. So if I was in the petition, I filed the petition on Monday. On Tuesday, I will file all my papers and request the court to determine certain jurisdictional questions. The fact that I have 180 days doesn't mean I should wait to 179 days to then begin to hustle. Everybody agrees that the policy is overheated. So we need speed. Okay. All right, so that brings me to my question, Dr. Bakova. the petition. Yes. So that brings me to my yes. question. Despite what you have said in terms of you don't yes. have to wait for the 180 days, you can do it on day one. Some, the petitioner and some yeah. um, um, actors in this matter have said that they encounter challenges. So the question I was going to pose to you is that why are, what are some of the areas that would prove difficult for this to be actualized? This picture you've painted in terms of seven days, you mm -hmm. can have it sorted. What are some of the challenges? I bring to question or perhaps um, ask mm -hmm. you the question around the uh, access, for instance, to the back end or CTC of uh, an INEC preventing that access, delays mm -hmm. in um, getting your materials ready for the case. Are these some of the deliberate, perhaps or not deliberate uh, issues that might come up in making your proposal a reality? Yeah. The point is that in modern judicial case management philosophy, there are steps you take to arrive at a conclusion. So step one would mean that if the decision of the tribunal states that 25% of uh, FCT is not required, that point fails. If the tribunal says that 25% of FCT is required, then the petition succeeds. Now, so as you go up the steps, you will come to the point where the most difficult question will be posed, which is electoral irregularity. Mr. Robert Clark was on your program yesterday, and he gave a description of how petitions work. Petitions work on two levels. The first one is the technical level. All the three points I laid out, they are jurisdictional, they don't need any facts. You don't need a single documentation from INEC because on the facts, Mr. Tinubu did not win 25% in Abuja. So you don't need any access from INEC. It's stated in the petition. So the question is a legal question. What is the consequence of Mr. Tinubu not getting 25% in Abuja? Is it fatal or is it not fatal? You don't need any uh, recourse to INEC for any documentation. If the question is answered in the negative, Tinubu goes through. If it is answered in the positive, Tinubu loses. You go to the next question. What is the consequence of Mr. Tinubu's uh, vice presidential candidate being on the ballot of senatorial? Is it fatal in view of Section 35 of the Constitution, one way or the other? And, then, and so on and so forth. So you exhaust the jurisdictional and procedural questions. If all those questions succeed, then you are within the time to dismiss the petition or allow it. Now, the more difficult one is if the procedural and jurisdictional points do not succeed, then we are bogged down by the electoral uh, irregularities, and I agree here that access to documentation will be necessary. But to sit down and do nothing, I haven't, I haven't heard a theme from the courts, I haven't heard a theme from the legal team, is the point that I'm saying is irritating. And the policy is overheated. The that day, Mr. Lai Mohammed was in, Abu, uh, in, in the UK, in the, in the US, shouting treason. Mr. Tinubu, uh, Mr. Peter B is here, making his own war. But we can resolve all this and have peace if the petition is decided, one way or the other, on technical points. If it fails, and I, I take the point that it's possible that it will fail, then we go to step two, which is evidential hearings. Well, you recently expressed doubt about the capacity or maybe we use a milder word, the ability of our courts to deliver untainted justice. And hence the reference to the Ahmad Lawan yes. case. Now, look also at the uh, lawyers. They wait till the last day, the very last day before they file uh, uh, petitions. So, don't we have a problem mm. of capacity here? And also integrity. What uh, people can do, once upon a time in this country, election petitions used to take three years. Even the uh, 180 days outer limit now is uh, an improvement. And now you are saying, oh, you can do this thing in seven days. Would, would that not 
subvert the objective of justice. The speech. If you told them, so long as you deliver a good decision, <laughs> if you give a man an opportunity to say, you are saying that Mr. Tinubu should not be president on the basis that he didn't win this. Tell me why. Do you need, for, for, do you need uh, 20 days to do that? You don't need 20 days. It's a legal question whether and in section 134 is contiguous or not. It's very simple. A bench ruling can be given on that. I've done big uh, arbitrations in the city of London and decided the point in three hours. So there's nothing that... You see, the problem is our judicial philosophy. I'm just looking at the Kenyan one. It says here, sustaining judiciary transformation. That's the Kenyan one. Sustaining judiciary transformation. How can this country, the so-called giant of Africa, run a judicial system that is 100 years old? That's the problem. The no. NGC is not doing anything to create a new... Yes. You know, I get, I get that point about best practices, where, about gold standard and yes. all of that. But this uh, section 134, yes. you have referred to it about twice now as yes. one of the questions to be addressed. Now, you raised the issue in January when you wrote yes. a letter to INEC asking INEC for a possible interpretation yes. of section 134. Well, I'd like to know whether you got a reply. Yes. And then as a senior advocate of Nigeria, what's your own opinion, <laughs> which you have not documented? about the interpretation of that section 134, sub 2 in particular? Well, I did a letter to INEC, and if they had answered me, maybe you wouldn't have been in this, in this log jam. But I had an interview, they didn't reply, by the way, but I had, the closest they came to reply was an interview I did on TVC with a, my good friend, Francis Okoye, and he admitted that it was an issue that required to be resolved, and I was surprised that they did nothing. My own view is that section 134, Applied literally, literally, because the rules of interpretation say if you read something and it's so clear to you, then you don't need to interpret it. The thing says you must win a quarter of the votes in two thirds of 36 states. And, and, and so what do you want to say? The answer is obvious. So the presidential candidate the answer does, is does not have to get 25% in FCT, otherwise, it will amount to an absurdity. If he already has 25% in, say, about 28 the, states. No, I didn't say that. I said no, that I want you to break, you break it down. percent I want you to break it down in a way that the other... I've broken it down. <laughs> no, let's apply I've it. Just, I've, just, I've just broken it down. <laughs> uh, Ruben, I've broken it down. You, have, you want to put words in my mouth, which I won't accept. It's so simple. You get a quarter of the votes in 25%, in, a quarter of the votes in... Two thirds of 36 states. That is what the law says, which is 24. So that's one part of it. It goes on to say, and what does that mean? And the FCT. So, as far as I'm concerned, you must also win 25% in the FCT. But that's not for me to say because I'll be judging what is before the, um, the tribunal. So, we think the tribunal can answer this question quite easily in one hour. That's my point. Quite easily. All right. It's not a difficult question to resolve. All right. Well, two quick things. One, you alluded to the statement made by uh, yes. Alaji Lai Muhammad, uh, Minister of Information and Culture. Yes. The effect uh, that uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Peter mm -hmm. V and his uh, running mate, uh, Dati Baba Ahmed, uh, have made statements that could make them uh, uh, liable for treasonable uh, felony. And then the second thing, <laughs> yes. the second thing yes. will be what you think of all this general talk about interim national government and the DSS coming forward to say, well, that's a mm. taboo subject because it will, it will amount to subversion. Yes. Yes. Yes, but you see, the problem is because there's a strong feeling that Mr. Tinubu will be sworn in and the petitions are running. And there's that feeling, ah, but if the man is sworn in, then what are we doing in the courts? That's the problem. And that's why I say, let's get these petitions resolved. I don't agree with Mr. Lai Mohammed that what Mr. Obi is saying is treason. I don't agree. But if we go below what the problem is, it's to do with the fact that Mr. Tinubu is likely to be sworn in on 29th of May 2023, whilst the petitions are not even heard. So why don't we try, even if we fail? Suppose my theory of seven days doesn't work. Well, let us try now. Let's try to see if we can get it going. And if we get it going, that is a plus for everybody. Why must we be in this continuous political you know, uh, quagmire of everywhere is in confusion? I really would urge the tribunal and legal team on both sides to do their possible best to push this case to the possible limit where we can see if there can be a conclusion before the swearing in. But clearly, I have said 
that they do not believe and the constitution does not recognize anything like an interim government. It's a total con a contraption. So as it stands now, Mr. Ahmed Wala Tinubu is the president-elect, whether we like it or not. And he's going to be sworn in on May 29, whether we like it or not. Many guys are going to be unhappy because they will say we have petitions. So in order to balance out justice, could we please get these petitions if they can be resolved before that date? So everybody is happy. If Peter B loses, then he goes home and knows he's lost. But why, why hang the thing? I can understand Peter B's concern and Dati Mohammed's outburst if Mr. Tinubu is being sworn at Eagle Square and the petition is hanging in um, the, the Court of Appeal. That doesn't sound too right to me. So where we strike the balance is to give our best possible shot to finish the petitions. Let us at least try. There's no point of sitting down and saying, can it be done? Let's try to see if it can be done. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad that you talk about and you push a strong case for the fact that it can be done, even though it's never been done in Nigeria, but doesn't rule out the possibility that it can be done. But I asked the question earlier, and I'd like you to uh, revisit it if possible. Bearing in mind all the things you said, mm -hmm. why is it then not an option to take? Why is it taking so long? As you mentioned, the courts haven't yet responded, at least um, until now, to the petition submitted by both Mr. Pitobi and Alaji Atiku, because a, a number of parties did submit their petitions. What is stopping judi judiciary? Mm -hmm. What is the barrier? Why can't we achieve this? What are the issues? I know we've talked about you know, justice being served, not to sub subvert justice, but what are the bigger <laughs> issues beyond just a will to make this happen? Look, I sat on the NJC, the National Judicial Council, for almost four years, and I found the place toughy and very conservative. And I pushed the case all the time that the National Judicial Council ought to do a lot more than it is doing. And that's the problem. We need to modernize the justice sector delivery process. I've got a case in court, even though I'm former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, it has sat in the High Court for 12 years. 12 years. Some cases take 20 years. There's something wrong. The confidence in the judiciary, which I expressed at an interview, I think, uh, with channels, is the fact that people say if you go to court, you don't get any, 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 any decision. You just sit down there. So isn't it time that the National Judicial Council can say, look, no, no, there's something wrong here. We need to shake things up. And that's what um, this uh, Ghana did, and that's what Kenya did. Eli Muhammad in the U.S. yesterday was telling his audience that his mission was to balance the narrative. And he told his uh, audience that this 2023 general election that we have had has been the best election ever conducted in Nigeria, the most authentic, fairest, the most credible, and that Beavers was a game changer with about 97% service delivery. And then he pointed out that Mr. Peter Obi has nothing to say, that he came third, in the uh, election, and that how can somebody who came third, who did not even satisfy the condition in section 135, be claiming that uh, his mandate has been taken away uh, from him? So it will look like, I mean, it, according to that, uh, Mr. Um, uh, um, Lai Mohammed, it's better to just talk about maybe Ashwaju Tinubu uh, and then uh, Atiku Abubakar of the PDP, and that uh, Labour Party has no case whatsoever. How do you react to that is logic? Well, let me just even push back on a few things I said, you know, because being a lawyer and former MBA president, I have to be careful that I'm speaking live, people are listening to me, while there's an active petition. So I think I, I, would, I would sort of like, like to push back on, let's allow the, um, what, what do you call it, the, the petition uh, deciders, the electoral, the the um, uh, election petition tribunal resolve some of these issues. Let's not, yeah, we can express opinions, but I would rather prefer that the uh, judicial process be the ultimate decider so that we don't go prejudicing and speaking out of turn. But having said that, I think that neither uh, Mr. Tinubu nor uh, Lai Mohammed can really quarrel with Peter B's complaint that the elections were not properly run. And in fairness to Mr. Tinubu, he didn't conduct the election, so I don't hold anything against him. Mr. Tinubu did not do anything wrong in becoming the presidential, uh, the president-elect, because the election was done by 
a supposedly neutral third party. So I, I'm not sure that Mr. Tinubu or Mr. Lai Mohammed needs to get into the fray because they didn't conduct it. They're not the electoral management body. It's Peter B's accusation or complaint goes to INEC. But if you were to ask my view, and I've been in election petitions for a long time, this is one of the worst uh, uh, election petitions ever conducted. I say this for a number of reasons. First, if you listen to the chairman of the electoral uh, um, uh, management body, the INEC, he made clear to us, ad nauseum, BVAX is the magic. Now it turns out that BVAX wasn't the magic. And I had the unfortunate displeasure of actually checking what exactly is BVAX in the law. And I was shocked that actually BVAX is not what we thought was represented to us by the National Assembly in the enactment of the Electoral Act 2023. To summarize, BVAX is no more than a tool to accredit a voter. So I suspect, without saying that is the way it will go, but I suspect that BVAX is not going to be as important in the petitions as we think. Because the, Oyo, the Oshun Court of Appeal decision did not accept the argument by the appellant that the BVAX is the magic vote that determines over voting. The court wanted to see a link to the original old ballot papers. In other words, the presidential polling units become important. And, and I was taken aback by that. So when I studied it, I found out that actually INEC has the legal authority to present results either through the normal paper way and the BVAX. So there will be no real change. No real change. So I, I hope that in the next round of amendments, we should really be very clear. What exactly is electronic voting, number one? What is the consequence for not following electronic voting? The only consequence now is a criminal charge of 500,000 Naira. Gentlemen, good day, my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, admitted Lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about, I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.